Hello guys, welcome back to another charity shop book haul. My name is Daniela and I will be showing you all the books that I've managed to pick up in the charity shop. Some of these are from charity shops, some of these are from secondhand bookshops. I will tell you the prices of them if I know them and let's jump straight in. The first book I picked up is Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. I got a paperback of this from Oxfam and it was £2.99. This is a dark academia book. We're following a main character that is attending some sort of school or society and it girl ends up found dead on campus. Apparently there is magic in this book. I'm assuming maybe a bit of a mystery because of the dead person on campus. Uh, and the second book for this has also been announced. Next up we have a thriller. This is Playing Nice by JP Delaney. It cost me £2.50. So this follows two families whose babies got mixed up at birth. And it's about two years later. So they've both got two year olds who they're attached to, they love very much. And they find out that the children got swapped and that the child they've been taking care of isn't actually their child. Next up, I found a Waterstones exclusive edition of The Dutch House by Anne Patchett. I already have a paperback copy of this, but I think it was like a pound in a used bookshop and it's a hardback and it has these gorgeous spread edges. So I decided to pick it up. I, I am a sucker for a good spread edge. Next up in the same used bookshop, we managed to find a hardback edition of book six of The Wheel of Time, Lord of Chaos by Robert Jordan, with like the old fashioned cover art. We are trying to collect all of the Wheel of Time books. Andy has now decided he wants them in hardback. <laughs> so we're going to keep an eye out for the hardbacks. That's going to be a task to find those. Next up, I picked up Demeanor. I think this is another thriller. I'm pretty sure this follows on from Maestra. Maestra? Maestra? The book jacket appears to have been obliterated. I think this only cost me 50p though, so no biggie. Um, and I needed the second book. I haven't read the first one yet. Next up, we have A Thousand Splendid Sons by Khaled Hossini, best selling author of The Kite Runner. Uh, this is one that Andy picked up. We've since seen a couple of people mention this. It's not in excellent condition. It does have like some foxing on there. I'm not sure how much we paid for it, but I don't think we paid a lot for it. Probably like a pound, 50p or a pound. So this is based in Afghanistan. It is following two women and the trials and tribulations of what they go through. It says, in the end, it is love that triumphs over death and destruction. So this sounds like it's going to be a very interesting read, possibly a sad book but hopefully with a happy ending hopefully uh, so that is a thousand splendid suns we passed by a little free library and i found this which i was super super happy about because i've been looking for these and i found get a life chloe brown by talia hibbert this is just a contemporary romance. I think it has some smut in it. Uh, I've heard good things about the whole trilogy of these. Obviously, it didn't cost me anything because it came from a little library. Um, we have since taken a couple of books back to that library because we've taken a couple out of it before. So we've paid our dues for now and I'm really enjoying looking in that little library. Next up, I picked up Tokyo Weno Station by Yu Miri. Um, this cost me £2. I picked this up because it says it's been translated. This one says, Born in Fukushima in 1933, the same year as the Emperor, Kazu's life is tied by a series of coincidences to Japan's imperial family and to one particular spot in Tokyo, the park near Weno Station, the same place his unquiet spirit now haunts in death. It is here that Kazu's life in Tokyo began, as a labourer in the run to up to the 1964 Olympics, and later where he ended his days, living in the park's vast homeless villages. Traumatised by the destruction of the 2011 tsunami and enraged by the announcement of the 2020 Olympics. It says a powerful rebuke to the imperial system and a sensitive, deeply felt depiction of the lives of Japan's most vulnerable people. Just want to let the sound of that and I think it'll be an interesting read. Next up, I picked up The Copper Promise by Jen Williams. This was £2. This is a first in a series. So Broken Binding are doing another Jen Williams set in their subscription box. And I've never read her before. I hadn't even heard of her. Um, so, But I just saw this and it's a first in a series. So I thought this will be worth a try, seeing as I will also have another series by her very shortly. Next up, we have The Once and Future Witches by Alex E. Harrow. I think I have another Alex E. Harrow book that I picked up. Ah, yeah, $10,000 of January says it on here. I've heard good things about this. It's another witchy book. It's based in 1893. It says there's no such things as witches. If the modern woman wants any measure of power, she must find it at the ballot box. Um, and then it says the Eastwood sisters, 
join the suffragists of New Salem, they begin to pursue the forgotten words and way that might turn the women's movement into the witches' movement. Sounds interesting. This one cost me £2.50. Next up I picked up Witch Sign by Den Patrick. I think this is another first in a series. It's a hardback, it cost me 50p. It says, it has been 75 years since the dragon's rule of fire and magic was ended. Out of the ashes, the Solmindra Empire was born. Since then, the tyrannical synod has worked hard to banish all manifestations of the arcane from existence. However, children are still born bearing the taint of the arcane, known to all as witch sign. Vigilants are sent out across the continent of Vintekveld to find and capture all those bearing the mark. No one knows when the vigilance of the Synod will appear and enforce the Empire's laws, but today they are coming, and may gods help those who bear the sign of the witch. Next, we have the Twyford Code. <laughs> I was umming and iron about picking this up. I wasn't sure because I've seen people talk about it, but then I had a look inside and it's just the formatting it's all like audio files all the way through and transcripts and i just kind of thought oh like it's just the formatting put me off a little bit and then so i decided no i'm not going to pick it up and then of course of course because i didn't pick it up and you picked it up this is just a murder mystery uh, i have heard good things i just don't know how keen i am on mysteries uh i haven't really read any so hopefully i will enjoy it this one costs three pound 49 Next up, Andy picked up the Great June Trilogy. This is just a hardback with all three books in, so he's going to get rid of his paperbacks. And this one was £4.99. I was listening to the audiobook for June. I just really wasn't enjoying it. I DNF'd June. He also picked up My Name is Red by Orphan Pamuk. It says winner of the Nobel Prize in Literature. This cost us £2. It's historical fiction, but it's a murder mystery. It says in Istanbul in the late 1590s, the Sultan secretly commissions a great book, a celebration of his life and his empire, to be illuminated by the best artists of the day. But when one of the miniaturists is murdered, their master has to seek outside help. Did the dead painter fall victim to professional rivalry, romantic jealousy, or religious terror? We have The Land Beyond the Sea by Sharon Penman. This is set in Jerusalem in 1172 uh, after the First Crusade in 1099. It's following a leader of a army who's seeking retribution for the massacre in 1099. There is also the king who is the ruler at the time who has leprosy. It sounds like it's going to be a very political historical book. It mentions political deception plaguing the royal court. It says, what is coming? This one costs £3.99 and it's a chunky one. Just a couple that Andy picked up. We have Moby Dick by Herman Melville. I don't know why he picked this up. He listened to it on audio and he didn't like it. Um, but for some reason, he just wanted to have this tiny book. So he bought a tiny copy of Moby Dick, which I know he will never read. He promised he would because I was like, you will not read this. He's like, I will read it just because you said I won't. We'll see. We'll see. That was 50p by the way. Um, and next up he picked up The Blinding Knife by Brent Weeks. This is part of, is it part of the Black Prism series? Yes. I think this is, ah, book two. Lightbringer series. Okay, book two in the Lightbringer series by Brent Weeks. We have book one up there. Um, so yeah, we managed to get book two. And this one, I think it was like a pound. It might have been 50p. Last few books, I picked up The Twits by Roald Dahl. Purely for nostalgia. I really like the quote in The Twits. This is like one of my favourite quotes. A person who has good thoughts cannot ever be ugly. You can have a wonky nose and a crooked mouth and a double chin and stick out teeth. But if you have good thoughts, they will shine out of your face like sunbeams and you will always look lovely. I just love The Twits. Um, I think I paid... How much did I pay for this? 99p. Well worth it. I'm totally going to read that. Uh, I then picked up as old as time a twisted tale from disney which is based on my favorite disney film which is beauty and the beast I have a few of these i'm not gonna buy any more of them because i haven't read any of them yet um but i think this is the one i am most excited to read i can't remember what i paid for this but oh 50p and finally a couple more terry pratchett books we found weird sisters which i think was 50p and we also found raising steam which was three pound and it's a hardback edition so there we have it guys i think there was about 21 books there did you see anything you liked the sound of did you find any new recommendations for books that you might keep an eye out for let me know in the comments and as always if you like the video please do give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and i will see you next time Thank you.